no more plugins, no kits, no important, no more equipment. Just master and use what you got. If you are starting off, become familiar with the term GAS. The fuck is GAS? Hold on. Don't tell me. 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 GAS. G don't tell me. GAS. GAS. Wait, wait, let me see what he said. Don't type it. Don't type it. No more plugins, no kits, no more equipment. Just master and use what you got. If you're starting out, become familiar with the term. So if you start now, become familiar with the term. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. GAS. The S got to. Don't fucking type it, man. Don't tell me. Don't tell me, bro. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. No, 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 no. Don't tell me, bro. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Cause I'm be mad. I'll be mad because I'm like GAS. Cause he said, he said, he said, be if you just starting out, become familiar with the term GAS. St stupid. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what GAS G -A -S stand for, bro? The fuck? Gear acquisition syndrome. Oh, I would have never guessed that shit. The fuck? The hell is that? Oh, that's that basically where you're just buying stuff. Let's look it up. Is gear acquisition syndrome real? Gear acquisition syndrome, also known as GAS, is commonly understood as the musician's unrelenting urge to buy and own instruments and equipment as an anticipated catalyst of creative energy and bringer of happiness. Bro, I think what causes gear acquisition syndrome? The anticipation of inquiring, acquiring new gear triggers the release of dopamine a neurotransmitter associated with pleasure and reward in our brains. The dopamine release can create a temporary high, a feeling of euphoria that makes us feel good. Let's read this. It's a, the psychology behind gear acquisition syndrome. Who the fuck is this nigga? Oh, he wrote this. My name is Daniel, and today I would like to discuss a phenomenon known as gear acquisition syndrome, or GAS. This phenomenon is something multiple musicians encounter, especially guitar players such as myself. This is this is crazy, bro. This is OD. Honestly, this is OD, bro. I, I would never, I would never tell nobody to read this shit, bro. I'm going to explain to y'all why. This is this is BS. Hey, bro, this is BS, bro. All right, let me read it. Let me read this shit that Daniel wrote, bro. Unraveling the psychology behind gear acquisition syndrome. In a world where the latest and greatest gadgets are just a click away, the compulsion to inquire more and more equipment has been given a name. Gear acquisition syndrome, GAS. Gas is a phenomenon where individuals feel an insatiable need to continuously buy and accumulate more equipment than they could realistically use. But what drives this relentless pursuit of acquisition? In this article, we delve into the psychology behind gas, exploring how our brain, society and economic structure might be playing a role in fueling this syndrome. I would never tell my students to read this shit, bro. This is O.D. Yo, if, do not read this shit. This is OD. I'm going to explain why, but let's keep reading it, though. Let's keep reading it. The neuros, the new, the, the neuroscience? Bro, really? The new, all right, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. The neuroscience of gas. The human brain is a complex organ and its responses to stimuli can often lead us down unexpected paths. According to neuroscientist Joshua Surinana, 2023, gas can significantly alter our brain's reward and stress systems. The act of acquiring new gear, whether it be musical instrument, a piece of camera equipment or a kitchen gadget can serve as a coping mechanism to alleviate anxiety. The anticipation of acquiring new gear triggers the release of dopamine, a neurotransmitter associated with 
pleasure and reward in our brains. This dopamine release can create a temporary high, a feeling of euphoria that makes us feel good. However, like any high, it's temporary. Once the dopamine levels drop, the feeling subsides, leaving us craving more. This can lead to a cycle of continuous buying to recreate this feeling, a hallmark of gas, Serenana, 2023. The role of society and economy. Oh my God, bro. Stop reading this type of shit, man. Our society and economy play a significant role in shaping our behaviors and desires. In a society characterized by high levels of resource abundance, behaviors such as gas may become more common. Barnum and Kwan, 2016. The availability and accessibility of goods combined with societal pressures to own the latest and greatest can contribute to the development of gas. In our consumer-driven society, we are constantly bombarded with advertisements and messages encouraging us to buy more. The latest gadget is always touted as being superior to the last, creating a sense of urgency and desire to upgrade. This coupled with the ease of online shopping and, insta and the instant gratification it provides can fuel the cycle of continuous acquisition characteristic of gas. Oh my God, this is cringy, bro. Managing... Oh my God, bro. This is uh, managing gear acquisition syndrome. While gas can be a challenging behavior to overcome, understanding its underlying causes can provide a roadmap for managing it. Here are some strategies that may help. Number one, mindful consumption. Being aware of your buying habits and the motivations behind them can be a powerful tool. Before making a purchase, ask yourself if you truly need the item or if you're seeking the temporary high of acquiring something. This is stupid. Oh, I got to keep reading this shit. Ah, I'm going to keep reading it, bro. This is really dumb. This is really stupid. Two, budgeting. Setting a budget. This is dumb. I don't even want to keep reading this shit, bro. But I I'm like trying to force myself to keep reading it. All right, I'm going to keep reading it. Budgeting. Setting a budget for gear purchases can help keep gas in check. This not only includes a monetary budget, but also a space budget. If you don't have room for new gear, it's a clear sign you may need to reassess your buying habits. Three, skill development. Instead of focusing on acquiring new gear, shift your focus to mastering the use of the gear you already have. Remember, the key to improvement in any field is practice and experience, not necessarily the latest equipment support networks <laughs> connecting with others who understand and have experienced gas can be beneficial this could be in the form of online forums support groups or therapy sharing experiences and coping strategies can provide valuable insights and encouragement encourage <laughs> Professional help. If gas is causing significant distress or impacting your financial stability, it may be helpful to seek professional help. Therapists and counselors trained in dealing with compulsive behaviors can provide strategies and tools to manage gas. Remember, it's normal to enjoy the thrill of new gear, but it's important to ensure that it doesn't become a compulsive behavior that negatively impacts your life. By implementing these strategies, you can enjoy your passion without falling into the cycle of continuous acquisition. Yo, this is the... You just need a mentor that you trust and respect and just do what he tell you to do, bro. This shit is fucking crazy. Daniel Lorena. Let's go see what he doing. Let's see if he quit music. He, let's, see. let's go see, bro. Let's see if bro gave up. Daniel Lorena. He, oh, he, bro is selling houses now. <laughs> bro. Oh, God, bro. 
bro's a bro's a real estate agent now. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Hold, let me process a response. Let me see. It's like I don't like turning my brain on, but let me turn my fuck. I don't want to turn my brain on. Hey, y'all know, like, y'all remember, uh, Ace, hey, y'all remember, um, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, when bro had, like, when bro, when somebody asked him something, he'd be like, I'm glad you asked. <sighs> like, like, now I got to respond to that, and I don't feel like it, and I don't want to turn my brain on, but, like, I'm like, okay, bro, you read all of that. You told him that it was dumb, so you got to explain why it's dumb. So now it's like, all right, bro. I still don't feel like doing it, man. Bro, if you want to buy shit, buy shit, man. It's that simple. It's a learning lesson in everything, bro. If you are continuing to buy stuff over and over and over, you are distracting from the fact that you probably are just not good at music and your mind is just not focused on music. So it's that simple, bro. If you are spending, if you got gas, you are not committed to the art. You don't have an objective. You don't have no jobs. You're not working on no opportunities. It's that simple. So if you focused on buying shit, you are one foot in music and one foot out. And you're probably very unintentional in music. And you're probably not good. And you probably have a lot of insecurities that are causing you to stay distracted from actually putting into work to be better in music, bro. So the fact that while you can't put your finger on why you continue to buy shit it's as simple as bro you your mind is consumed in another area of your life and you're not willing to sacrifice those things to do music for real because doing music for real is very boring is very tedious and it requires a lot of work and since there are no guarantees on the on the other end it's kind of hard for people to commit to music the way they commit to college it's kind of hard for people to commit to music the way they would commit to getting their real estate license or preparing for the real estate test because it's very dark at the end of the music road. And so a lot of people cannot commit to the music journey because it's dark. And so a lot of people put themselves in the recreation category. A lot of people put themselves in the I just do music for fun or as a hobby category, knowing damn well. If they favorite artists reached out to them, they would be on a plane, a train or a motherfucking automobile to go and try to secure the opportunity that they never believe they can secure because that's how wacky music is. So since people are not since people are afraid to jump off the porch, since people are afraid to pull the trigger and actually commit 100 percent to music, they find themselves in a space to where. They're not going to put music as number one and then it don't don't have kids. And don't have a girlfriend and don't have a wife or don't have a, a nine to five or a job or don't ha don't be a person who wants to maintain his credit or don't be a person who has a car note insurance and you paying all your bills every time on the first and you getting haircuts every two weeks and you going to the gym and you getting in shape and you making smoothies every motherfucking morning. Like you're not going to be able to focus on music if you're doing all of that. So since you're spending some time in music. Your mind is consumed with all this other shit. So while you sit down and make music and you're not good at it, you're not good at it. So you're not you're not getting the sounds you want. You're not getting to the, the, the visions that you have for music. You're not able to get there creatively because you're not investing the amount of time into it. And so you sit there and you get stuck. So is you you get a better feeling from watching other people do music than you making music yourself because you're able to be inspired by the beautiful music that other people make when you watch it versus you doing it because you can't do it. You don't know how to play keys. You barely know how to play scales. You know how to play the chords or you need to learn this or in order for you to get to that sound that your favorite person gets to. You got to learn how to play guitars, which means you got to play, you know, take guitar lessons. But what's the point in investing money and time into learning a guitar or a piano or a doll if it's dark at the end? So people say, OK, well, I'm not going to jump off the porch or the cliff or stop going to the gym or stop cutting my hair. I'm not going to stop making my smoothies. I'm not going to stop going on dates every Friday night with my girl. I'm not going to stay up after 11 p.m. to make beats or make music because it's going to affect my time from going to work. Or I might get written up or I might get fired. And so you you invest minimal time into the art and you're never able to get 
anything from it because you're not giving anything to it. So now you're distracted because your mind is distracted with life, bro. Your, li your, your life is your mind is distracted with fucking life, which is OK. It is OK to be distracted with life. If you're taking care of your responsibilities, you are a good person. You are a good fucking person. So if your ass is waking up, making smoothies, going to the gym, kissing your girl, taking your kids to practice, taking your kids to school, taking your ass to the gym, going out on outings with your family, hanging out with your boys, getting your hair cut every two weeks, washing your car, paying your bills on time, managing your credit, checking your credit karma, and music is fourth. You're a good person. But the problem is you're passionate about music to some extent and you want music to serve you in a way that your girl serving you. You want music to serve you in a way that your kids are serving. You want music to serve you in a way that your job serving you. You want you want music to bring you in money the way your job is bringing you in money because you've seen other people do it. So now you go and you think that this magic, this equipment is magically going to propel you to the place to where you can have music serve you. But you realize that you got to put a lot of hours into that shit and you ain't ready to put the hours into it. So you just keep buying all of this shit over and over and over and over thinking that it's going to propel you and it doesn't. Bro, you still got to put the hours in. So now you're wondering why you're buying shit and then you're wondering why you're not being propelled musically because you didn't put the hours in. So now you think you got a fucking problem. So now you diagnose yourself with gas. No, you don't have gas, bro. You don't need to go to a licensed professional. You don't have a disorder. You just got other shit in your life that's priority. It's fine. It's fucking fine. That's crazy, bro. That's wild. So while you sitting there thinking, so while you over there diagnosing yourself with a problem to where you got to seek a therapist, you just diagnose yourself with a, a disorder. You don't have a disorder, bro. You don't have a disorder. You just, the, the, the music journey is dark and your mind is, is saving you by telling you that like, bro, you can't invest hours into something that has a dark tunnel at the end. There's no guarantee in music. So if you go buy a Roland, then a Korg, then a Yamaha, you go, you go, you go buy a Gretsch guitar or you, you go buy, you know, shit, LP or whatever kind of drums and you go buy, you spend 10 K on music, bro. Okay. There's, there's no return on your investment. Most likely in music, bro. So if you keep buying shit, it's because it's probably all the shit that you dreamt of having when you were a kid or your favorite artist has, bro, you buy. It, okay, cool. But the problem is, is we buy it and we want it. We want it to do something for us. But what you're not understanding is the only way that shit you're buying is going to do something for you is if you put the work in. And if you put the work in, it's going to require you to sacrifice time and something else that you're putting time into, bro. And your mind psychologically won't allow you to sacrifice your life, which is why you you, you find yourself in a rut in music. And. And instead of facing it, you go buy more shit, which is the coping mechanism for sure. But if you got the money to do it, then fucking okay, whatever. It's not a disorder. You just got to make a decision. That's it. You want music to serve you, but you want to be in bed when your girl get in bed. You don't want your girl to wake up at 5 a.m. And be upset because she reached look over and your side of the bed is cold because you never got in the bed. And then she get up because she worried about you and your ass in there making music. So that's why you got gas. Cause because you get in the bed when she get in the bed. Y'all spooning, y'all kissing, y'all cuddling, y'all having sex. Your kids wake up in the middle of the night, they get in the bed with you. So you got to, you know what I'm saying? So you taking care of your kids. You, you putting your kids to sleep, you get up, you combing your kids' hair, you putting clothes on, you taking your kids to school, bro. And you talking about you got gas. No, bro, you got priorities and you're actually doing a good job because you're taking care of your actual, your life, bro. So you don't got no disorder, bro. you actually a smart human being. Fuck wrong with y'all, bro. Fuck wrong with y'all, dude. You just gave yourself a disorder. Now all that money, you just spent all this money on this equipment right and now you about to go spend money on a therapist and then he gonna sit there and take you through the motions because that's what he get paid for 
to either go coddle your 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 disorder and and feed into it because the therapist ain't gonna tell you on the first day like bro i'm not even gonna take your bread bro you tripping this, this shit don't fucking exist bro he gonna he gonna take you through them eight therapy sessions he gonna take you through them eight therapy sessions he gonna coddle you and let you outlet 100 percent 100 percent he gonna let you do it like like, like you want to pay me you want to pay me 199 an hour you want to pay me 75 dollars an hour to 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 help you through your uh your your gas <laughs> so you just go all you're gonna do is go in there and pay this dude to tell him all the shit you bought and then tell him that you keep buying more shit and he probably don't even got no experience in music so he he learning from you <laughs> he learning from you if you ever been to therapy you know they be really learning from your experiences to use on the next people bro so you went through this whole rabbit hole when you just needed one person to tell you you're tripping, stop buying this, buy this, use this, do this with that, do this with that, do this with that. That's all you was missing was a mentor. But see this wrong with the DIY community. Y'all be trying to get and do everything on your own. It's not how this shit work. You need a mentor. Y'all need guidance. Y'all need development. Y'all need somebody that can help y'all like a Dame Taylor, bro. Y'all be wanting to DIY. Y'all just want to go buy shit and watch a tutorial and now your ass on all streaming platform. That's not how this shit work, bro. It's not how it work. It's the problem, bro. Shit crazy. Yeah, then. <laughs> bro, I ain't never dealt with no shit like that, bro. I got people, I got people in my in my in my life that I trust and I listen to whatever the fuck they tell me. That's it. That's, that's that's the that's that's the golden role bro you got to have a community of people that you can listen to what they tell you to do it's that simple so join m league i'm i'm not gonna put I, that's the one thing about m league man is that and this this ain't no plug for m league this is this is what m league is bro it's Making sure that everybody does the most with their time and does what makes the most sense for them and for the community is it's that simple because all the M League members got kids. Like one of our M League members just joined. He worked 50 hours a week and he's trying to find a way to make time for music. So my job is to help him figure that out. You know what I'm saying? Like my job is to help them figure that out. So at the end of the day, this whole entire community just lacks direction. Y'all all got equipment y'all all, everybody in here has at least a scarlet everybody here has at least a scarlet but y'all don't know how to get to where y'all want to go so y'all rely on the tutorials and then y'all got a dame that can change your life and y'all hating on me not even realizing i'm the nigga that can save you y'all crazy bro this shit is wild gang that shit wild I can help every single one of y'all motherfuckers watching me, whether you 60, 50, 40, 30, 10. I can help all of y'all, men, women. You just started Logic FL, Pro Tools, mixing, production, DJing. I can help y'all in anything related to the dream chase or music. That's what that's my specialty. So since y'all have never seen anything like me, I think it's fake. And since y'all type my name in and don't know credits come up, y'all think it's fake. Not realizing I work with everybody. Y'all think it's fake because y'all only know Grammy nominated, Grammy award winning, multi-platinum. Y'all listen to that, not realizing that they be the dumbest ones. It's like, bro, this whole internet shit is wacky. It's wacky. And then you go listen to Grammy nominated and he don't even actually care about you. He just going to tell you a bunch of stories and you going to be so inspired by the story. Oh, wow. Like you were in the studio with Michael Jackson. So that's going to give you some inspiration to go back to DIY mode with no real direct. You never got direction from bro. He just gave you two bomb ass stories that inspired you to one day. Hopefully that could be you not even realizing that. Like, I still don't know where the fuck I want to go. I'm fired up. I'm amped up because I talked to Grammy award winning. I talked to Grammy award winning. That was inspiring. Like now I want to run through a wall, but like you're going to run through a wall and you don't even know why you ran through the wall. There's no real mentors on here. Dame Taylor the only one. When the last time your favorite influencer that you subscribed to other than me and looked at the camera and pointed at you, when? When? 
When has any other YouTube dude pointed at you? When? You know, you know I'm fucking your heart up right now. You know I'm fucking your heart up right now. Stop acting like I'm fucking your heart up right now. Haters too. All right then. All right then. All right then. I don't want to hear it. Join them league. And the more goofy shit, the more the prices go up. Fuck you mean. Y'all going to see that Dame is the truth one day. Don't wait until you can't afford it. That's all I'm saying. Because what y'all not going to do is run me away. So I'm not going nowhere. I've been doing this streaming shit since 08. I, I don't give a fuck if y'all teamed up 30 deep. We're going to sit y'all down one at a time. One dummy, two dummy, three dummy, four dummy, five dummy, six dummy, seven dummy, eight dummy, nine dummy, ten dummy, eleven dummy, twelve thirty dummy, thirteen dummy, fourteen dummy, fifteen dummy, sixteen dummy, seventeen dummy, eighteen dummy, nineteen dummy, twenty dummy, twenty one dummy, twenty two dummy, twenty three dummy, twenty four dummy, twenty five dummy, twenty six dummy, twenty seven dummy, twenty eight dummy, twenty nine thirty, thirty dummy. 